All right, guys, we have a fun episode ahead of us today. We're going to look at how to create this stop motion style text animation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get started. The first thing we're going to do is to bring Fusion Composition Clip into our timeline and then take it directly to the Fusion page. Here, we're going to bring a background node as well as a text node to the node editor, and then we're going to connect the text node to the background node. This will use the text node as the foreground. Now let's go ahead and connect Merge 1 to Media All 1 and then just change the color of the background to whatever color that you think is fitting for this effect. Now let's come back to the text node and we're going to type in our first character here, which is H. Then let's go ahead and choose a font that you think is going to work better for this effect. And then let's also bring up the size a little bit here as well. Once all that is done, let's copy this text node and simply paste it twice. Now each time we paste it, the new text node is going to become the foreground of the previous one, which is what we want. Now let's come to the second text node and type in our second character. And once that is done, let's go to the third one and type in our third character. Next, we're going to work on the spacing between each character. We're going to come to the first text node and just bring the first character a little bit over to the left. Then we're going to go to the third text node, bring the third character a little bit over to the right. Now, the next thing I want to do is to come to the second text node and change the font of the character to something different. Then we're also going to do the same thing for the uh, third character as well. Now, a lot of this work, guys, is really optional. I'm just doing this because I think it's going to work better for this effect. And all of these are just uh, cosmetic changes. OK, so to create our stop motion, the first thing we actually need to work on is creating some sort of motion for all of our characters here. So we're going to come to the first text node. We're going to move our playhead to the 58th frame. And we're going to keyframe the center parameter because this is where we want the animation of this character to end. Then we're going to move the playhead to the first frame and then keyframe the center parameter again. But this time we're going to move this character out of frame because this is where we want the beginning of the animation to start. Now let's move on to our second character here. We're going to move our playhead to the 68th frame. This is where the animation is going to end. And let's keyframe the center parameter. Then we're going to move the playhead to the 10th frame. This is where the animation is going to begin. We're going to move our character upwards and move it out of the frame. So basically, there's going to be a 10 frame delay between each character's animation. Lastly, we're going to work on our third character. And the only real difference here is that instead of ending at the 68th frame, we're going to have it end at the 78th frame. And instead of beginning at the 10th frame, we're going to have it begin at the 20th frame. So once that is done, if we go ahead and have a look at what we have right now, guys, we see that we have linear motion for all of our character animations. And now we're ready to add stop motion on top of this. So to create our stop motion effect, the first thing we need to do is to bring in the time stretcher node. And we're going to insert it right after our text node. So now let's look at how the time stretcher node works. What the time stretcher node allow us to do is to determine which frame of the animation is going to be displayed in our viewer here. And that's controlled by the source time parameter. So as now you see, it's set as zero. So throughout this entire video, you will only see the zero frame of our first character's animation. So now if we change this to, let's say, 28 instead of zero. So now throughout this entire video, you're only going to see the 28th frame of our first character's animation. Similarly, if we change it to, let's say, 38, you're only going to see the 38th frame of our first character's animation throughout this entire video. Now, at what point you want what to be displayed is going to be controlled by keyframing. So knowing that, let's come to the fourth frame here. We're going to keyframe source time here, we're going to still leave it as zero. But if we come to the fifth frame here, we're going to keyframe and we're going to have it display the fifth frame of our first character's animation. And this is how we're going to create that frame skipping look that comes with stop motion. But in order to create a continuous stop motion, we have to be able to replicate this pattern of keyframing 
throughout this entire video for our first character. Now to do that, let's come to the spline editor and we're going to select source time. Let's just uh, bring up all our keyframes, all three of them, select all three of them, then right click in the menu, go to set loop, select relative. The, what this will allow us to do is to repeat this pattern of keyframing, but relative to the new frames as the pattern repeats throughout this entire video, as you will see. So now if we go ahead and uh, have a look at what we have right now, guys, um, we pretty much have the stop motion effect built for our first character here. Next, we're going to create stop motion for our second uh, character here, and we're just going to pretty much replicate the same process. But the difference is that we're going to have the first keyframe start at the 10th frame, but we actually have to come to the zeroth frame first and click this off. But the reason why this is keyframe is because by default, the system always adds a keyframe at uh, the position of the playhead. So let's just click this off, then come to our first keyframe at the 10th frame. Then we're gonna go to the 14th frame here, keyframe it, and we're gonna have it set at 10th frame of this animation. Then come to the first keyframe, do the same thing, and then we're gonna move to the 15th frame here. Let's keyframe and set it to 15. So now all we need to do is to repeat this pattern throughout this entire video by coming to the spline editor. Once again, select all three keyframes, right click, go to set loop and then select relative. This will repeat this pattern relatively throughout this entire video. Lastly, we need to pretty much repeat the same process, but for our third character here, we're going to have the first keyframe start at the 20th frame instead. But first things first, let's make sure if there's any keyframe before that, we remove it. So let's go ahead and come to the 20th frame, set a keyframe there in source time. Then we're gonna go to the 24th frame, set a keyframe. Then guys, we're pretty much just going to repeat the same process that we uh, did earlier uh, for the other two characters. And then let's come to Spline Editor, repeat this pattern. So if we have a look at what we have right now, guys, we have, well, we have a stop motion effect built for all three our characters here. And all we need to do at this point is just uh, to add some extra elements to this effect. The first thing we're gonna do here is to add some wiggly effect to our character motion. And to do that, we're going to add a transform node to all three of our characters. We're gonna insert the transform node in between text and time stretcher node. So let's come to the first transform node here. As you guys will see, angle parameter is the one that uh, we will be playing with. So let's go ahead and right click angle under modify width, select shake. This will take us to the modifiers tab. And this is where we can add some randomness to the angle parameter. So the first thing we're gonna do here is to set the range of the angle. We're going to have the minimum start at minus four and the maximum cap at positive four. So if we have a look at what we have right now, guys, on top of this stop motion, we now have this wiggly effect added to it. We can also play with the smoothness uh, parameter, which controls how dramatic or how rigid um, it's going to look in between the changes. So the lesser it is, the more rigid it's going to look. So um, this, is, this is looking fine uh, right now. All right, let's move on to our second transform node here. We're going to once again play with the angle parameter. This time we're going to set the range to perhaps minus five and positive five. Now let's play with the smoothness uh, parameter as we uh, replay the stop motion. I want to bring it down quite a bit, just like we did earlier. I do think that having a more rigid uh, and uh, drastic uh, effect is going to go really well with the stop motion. Okay, lastly, let's go ahead and repeat the similar process, but for our third transform node, uh, here and do a very similar thing. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that we can also reseed a random seed parameter. This can also add some more elements to, uh, to the movement that you see here. But overall, uh, this is definitely another element that we can add to stop motion to take it to the next level.
Last but definitely not the least, we can also add some shadow to our characters. So let's go ahead and bring the shadow node in. We're going to insert it in front of all these characters. So let's do that. And we can play with the shadow offset as well as the softness settings in the shadow node. So guys, if we have a look at it right now, it's, it's looking pretty good. So all we need to do is just to take it back to the edit page, let it render. And uh, this is it, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy this video. I hope it helps. And uh, I will see you next time. Thank you.